Hello, so this is a little talk I have thought about a little bit in collaboration with the Catholic Parents of Special Needs Children Conference happening at the end of April in New Jersey. My question is, how can we make our pastor really an ally in helping out our children with special needs? Because so often uh, the stories I hear online seem to put a kind of dichotomy between the two or kind of a uh, oh, my pastor doesn't understand me, my pastor has difficulty. Whereas at the same time, I see with pastors, with priests, that none of them really have an issue with special needs children. None of them really don't want children to succeed. I mean, most of us who will go into the priesthood, we are the ones who care a lot about helping people, about people who are underprivileged, people who have difficulties in life. But one of the difficulties as a pastor and I've never been a pastor, but this is just from other priests I know, is you can tend to get a little overwhelmed. You can have this and that and the other thing all to do all at once. And if this parent who's coming with an, with an autistic or with a, you know, a kid or with a kid with other mental disabilities or with other physical disabilities is coming in insisting, 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 it can seem overwhelming. And so I want to present and I want to suggest that a good way to go with this is not so much just to insist, 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 but to really try and work with the pastor as an ally. Because the pastor is really caring. Unfortunately, he is also, a lot of times they're just overwhelmed. An average parish often has 2,000 families and, you know, just imagine yourself trying to help out 2,000 families and one is asking you for a bunch of your time. I think to a large extent one of the biggest things we have now in most of the bigger dioceses in Canada and the U.S. is that someone in the diocesan office will be kind of in charge of special needs ministry. And depending on what our children need, what the special needs we're looking for, we might be able to help, find help there. Now that help can either be where that person provides a tool or uh, help to the pastor to understand this, or it might be something that's right at a Dawson level. Uh, it really just depends. For example, they may have a way to have it so maybe your cry room has the volume turned down so people who have sensory difficulties aren't overwhelmed. Or maybe they have a way to better accommodate people in wheelchairs at your parish or something like that. And they can help the pastor with those type of things. On the other hand, other things they might provide on a Dawson level. For example, maybe your parish just offers catechesis, sacramental preparation, in one way for kids who don't have any special needs. Whereas the diocese runs a one for those who have special needs because it's easier in a way for the diocese to run it for, you know, these 50 kids with special needs in kind of one organized thing than for this parish run it for two, and this parish run it for three, and this parish run it for one. And it's just a practical matter because we do have a limited amount of time, a limited amount of space, a limited budget for dioceses, and so those things are the case. You know, I'm really impressed here in DC, I live in the Archdiocese of Washington, DC, that whenever I go to a Dawson event, there's always someone doing the sign language interpretation. I really don't understand sign language, that's actually one thing I kind of have thought about a little bit learning, but we see that in all the Dawson events. Obviously, just for money things, unless one of the parents of one of the kids who's deaf can do it or something like that, most parishes can't afford to have a sign language interpreter at every Mass. It's just, it, it, it's just too expensive. On the other hand, they will have those diocesan Masses where they will have an interpreter for those who are deaf you know, or even hard of hearing. I know, for example, a parish where they have a, for a long time had these kind of big headsets and they were a little awkward, but now, for those who are hard of hearing, they have a Bluetooth thing that works to your phone. So you can connect your phone to your parish and then just wear a Bluetooth earpiece or whatever Bluetooth headphones you have and it will give you the, whatever the volume is, in a louder volume so you can hear it if you're hard of hearing. For the people who are blind, I'm not really that sure. I think a lot of times the difficulty is really going to be more about 
things like communion where we just have to have one of the extraordinary ministers or the priest go back to them rather than trying to have a blind person come down the aisle with a lot of other foot traffic because I can only imagine with the white cane and everything like that it would be difficult where there's a lot of people packed together and not always you know an organized movement there and so I think in those things we can really try and work with pastors as our allies. And a lot of it is an attitude too. If we come in with a confrontational attitude, a lot of pastors are gonna be a little standoffish, okay, like, you know, because we don't wanna make a mistake. We don't wanna get in trouble, we don't wanna... But if you come in and say, hey, and you investigate first, you say, hey, there's this simple app that if we put it in, we can, uh, you know, we can send a sound system to via the internet to uh, people's phones and then they can wear whatever Bluetooth and people who are hard of hearing or, uh, you know, or even vibrating from your Bluetooth. I'm sure there's things like that for people who are deaf, uh, who use those type of things, you know, like, well, they, they have the uh, Conkler implants or whatever, that, so that they can understand what's happening at mass. And, you know, maybe I'll donate, you know, part of the money to get this implemented. I don't know the exact budget. I'm not the budget guy. But I think in that sense, those type of things are important. The attitude we come in with, because if you come in with a controversial, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this pastor listen to me. Blah, blah, blah. The pastors got to generally have more or less the same response to you, because as human beings, they t we tend to mirror emotional states. As somebody who's autistic, we need to learn. We have to learn this consciously, but. Uh, you know, so if you're angry, the person you're talking to will tend to be angry. If you're kind of, you know, let's be helpful, let's try and help these people out, you know, on a kind, nice way, uh, you know, you're asking for an appointment and very gentle in figuring out a time, not saying, I need an appointment at this particular time and if you don't do it then, you know, we're in trouble. No, I mean, you have to be a little flexible with the pastor too. And I think in ways like that, with that attitude, with looking sometimes the dice and not just the parish, we can really look to priests as allies for kids with special needs and look to those with special needs as ways to, you know, for the parish to exercise ministries because I think sometimes some of the special needs are great ways for uh, teaching young people to accept people who are different and teaching young people, uh, you know, different things of charity. For example, maybe we have some of the teenagers who help people in wheelchairs move around the church. They they push the old people in the wheelchairs up for communion and things like that. And that would be a great way of teaching them that little bit of service. That's starting them out on service. And I think in such a way we can be a more cooperative and less conflict-driven relationship between pastors and parents of those with special needs or those of us who have special needs because I can imagine some people who are autistic or some people who are deaf or blind can't live more or less independently, but they still might be asking their pastor for a little bit of help here or there. And so hopefully that helps. This was done for the Catholic Parents of Special Needs Children Conference, and uh, it's on my channel here, Autistic Priest, as well. So if you want more content like this, specifically about autism, most of my other videos are not about special needs in general, but specifically about autism, subscribe or like or follow whatever media you're on. God bless you. Have a great day.